You know, I really do love this little mod for Crusader Kings 3 called Agot. Maybe you've heard of it. And as a fan of the books, those being the Song of Ice and Fire and the lore books, I also really enjoy discussing, well, the lore, its world and its characters. So recently I got it in my crazy little head that maybe I should talk a little bit more about this lore on the channel because, you know, it's something other than talking about the houses or committing war crimes in various series. So today I'm going to begin talking about the different regions of Westeros, beginning with my favorite region, the Reach, and discussing its history and geography, including where they stand today in terms of the mod and where you can expect to see them going forward. Remember, I try to keep these lore videos as accurate and as related to the mod as possible, although some of this information is inferred by me, so please don't come to my house and yell at me because I missed a minor detail somewhere. But if I miss something egregious, please do yell at me and include it in a comment below. But regardless, thanks for watching. This is the Reach. The Reach is located in the southwestern part of the Westeros continent, with the Westerlands, Riverlands, and Crownlands to the north and northeast, Dorne to the southeast, and the Stormlands to the east. The Reach and Riverlands are therefore tied with the most regional borders at five each. The Reach is by far the most fertile of Westeros' kingdoms, the source of most of its crops, the finest wines which come from the Arbor, home of the red wines to the southwest, the best honey which come from the beesberries of Honeyholt along the Honeywine River, and the sweetest ciders which come from the Fossaways along the Great Mander River, among many other fineries which come from the region. In terms of climate, the Reach would likely be temperate for most of its central bulk, experiencing seasons as many places in Central Europe would. But along the coast, residents would likely experience a much more Mediterranean climate, warm and humid, like those of southern France or northern Italy and Spain. This is due, I believe, to the region's inspiration from France, both historically and geographically. However, one would not be surprised to find heavy rainfalls and wetlands to the north near the Riverlands, rocky cliffs and mines near the borders of the Westerlands, and great mountainous and palm-fronded shores along the south near Dorne and the coasts. This breadth of diversity makes the region not only fascinating but beautiful to behold for most who visit, with many commentating on how lush and bountiful it is. It is such a lush and beautiful place that even the bastards of the great houses are given a kindness, being called flowers like the many wild ones which sprout in the fertile fields and along the great rivers of the region. The Sunset Sea borders the western coast of the Reach, and while a good portion of the region is surrounded by water, most of its naval strength is actually concentrated in the south at the Arbor, with some 200 warships, the rest of the fleet resting in the Shield Isles near the mouth of the Mander, one of two major river systems in the Reach, the other being the Honeywine. The Honeywine, which enters the Honeywine Valley, is considered the greatest agricultural region in the Seven Kingdoms and begins near the seat of House Florent, Brightwater Keep. Heading south past the Beesberries of Honey Holt and eventually exiting to the sea at the great ancient city of Old Town, the largest and wealthiest city of Westeros and home to the High Towers, it is home also to the Great Citadel where Westeros Maesters are trained and the Starry Sept where the seat of the Seven once sat before moving to King's Landing. The Honeywine exits into two massive straits which allow for a plethora of trade both to the north and to the east. To the north we have the Mander, which starts far to the northeast near Tumbleton, a great hub of trade held by House Footley, roughly 150 miles southwest of King's Landing. The Mander flows southwest, past the Coswells of Bitter Bridge, way down near the Fosways of Cider Hall, past High Garden, which sits just near it on top of a hill, and all the way to the Shield Isles, a chain of isles which today watch the seas with great towers against attackers or ironborn raiders which historically plagued the region and are the reason for their inception. The Reach, thanks to its lush fertility and beauty, is the second wealthiest kingdom in the Seven Kingdoms behind the Westerlands, which benefit from rich ores and gold of their vast rocky valleys. Still, the Reach is prosperous in its exports of fruits, vegetables, and goods, and many notable cities of trade from Tumbleton to the north Ashford near the Stormlands and Old Town along the sea exist, in part, to fulfill that demand from not only Westeros, but the wider world of Essos and beyond. But trade is not all the region is famous for, as it boasts not only one of the largest armies in Westeros, supposedly some 50 to 70,000 strong, but some of the best knights in the Seven Kingdoms too, with many wearing beautifully decorated plate arms and armor, accentuating the bounty of their homelands in tournaments at home and abroad. Historically, the armies of the Reach have battled with Ironmen raiders from the sea and with the Dornishmen, particularly those along the Dornish marches, which include the lush red mountains that touch the Reach. Although if you go back far enough, you can find instances of Storm Kings and Kings of the Rock in the Westerlands invading the region as well, although not as common as the Dornish or the Ironborn. Although most of the martial lords such as the Karens, Dundarians, and the Swans now belong to the Stormlands, having once belonged to the Reach long ago, Reach marcher lords like the Tarleys and Peaks still claim the title Defender of the Marches among their many, many others. Though many noble houses exist in every region, the major or most noteworthy ones in the Reach today are the Ashfords, the Beesberries, the Bulwars, the Caswells, the Cranes, the Florence, the Fossaways, the Hightowers, the Merryweathers, the Mullendores, the Peaks, 
the Oakharts, the Redwines, the Rowans, the Tarleys, the Tyrells, and the Virewells. Although there are a few others that you could argue are equally as important. Many of these ancient and proud families claim their descent from King Garth Greenhand, a mythical First Men High King who lived during the dawn and whose descendants founded House Gardner, the longtime Reach Kings. Most of the major houses that still hold power today, such as the Oakharts, Tarleys, and Florence, are descended from these Reach Kings. The Gardeners and their descendants were the builders of High Garden and many other great cities in the region, but interestingly not Old Town, whose great structures existed long before the arrival of the First Men. Some houses, such as the Oscries, Peaks, and Balls, were once great and mighty in their time, but have since faded since the fall of the Gardeners or the Blackfire Rebellions, which we'll get to shortly. House Peak, it should be said, once held a great feud with another major house, the Manderleys, who they defeated and evicted from the region at the behest of King Persian III Gardner. The Manderleys, named after the Manda River themselves, have since held power in White Harbor in the north, where they have grown significantly in acclaim and might in that region. The Reach is ruled by House Tyrell of High Garden, an Andal descended house which took over the region when King Aegon I, or Aegon the Conqueror of House Targaryen, destroyed the former Reach Kings in a battle known as the Field of Fire, which saw the Gardeners extinguished and many of its allies decimated and severely weakened. In fact, the reason the Tyrells, formerly stewards under House Gardener, were given control of the region at all was because High Steward Harlan Tyrell surrendered High Garden to Aegon without a fight, who then in turn gave him control of the region for his loyalty. High Garden, the seat of the Tyrells, is itself a stunning castle, situated atop a mighty hill near the Mander. Those who have seen its high, slender towers say it looks as if it was grown out of the very earth, its three ringed white walls, each decorated with hedge mazes, vines, gardens, and other finery. Its halls are full of song, its sept second only to the starry sept in Old Town itself, its weirwood garden with three interlocking trees known as the Three Singers, the finest in all of Westeros. High Garden is perhaps the most beautiful and luxurious castle in all of Westeros. Some of the houses descended from the former Reach Kings, despite the centuries since their installment, still chafe against the rule of the Tyrells, with houses such as the Oakharts, who boast a better claim being descended from Garth's son John the Oak, founder of chivalry in Westeros, and House Florent, who famously begrudge and work against the Tyrells as much as possible. In fact, many of the Reach evidently harbored resentment not only against the Tyrells, but the Targaryens who gave them power in the first place, with many Reach houses participating in the Blackfire Rebellions, a series of civil wars which took place over roughly 60 years that began because of King Aegon IV on his deathbed, legitimizing all of his countless bastards. House Peak and Ball suffered greatly for their large contributions during these rebellions, with House Peak, whose sigil as you can see is three black castles on orange, were stripped of two of these castles by the crown, and House Ball, descended from Garth's daughter Floris the Fox, being, as far as we know, completely wiped out. Interestingly, the Tyrells and all other major houses of the Seven Kingdoms remained loyal to the Targaryens throughout the rebellion. In fact, during Robert's Rebellion, the current major start date of the mod, the Tyrells were one of the only kingdoms to stand with the dragon, the ones who gave them power so long ago, but were spared harsh punishment, much like Dorne and the houses of the Stormlands who fought for the dragon instead of the stag. As it stands now from a mod perspective, that's really all you'd need to know about the region to not only enjoy the game, but to have a fairly firm grasp on its chief houses and ideals. The War of Five Kings is certainly on the horizon for the mod, and many Tyrell detractors will likely look to the fickle house as their loyalties waver from stag to stag, so to speak. The Blackfire Rebellions 2 will likely arrive sooner than later, which should make for very interesting gameplay as the region chooses its loyalties. I've intentionally left out the Dance of the Dragons in this lore video as the split of that conflict had less to do with this region and more of the realm as a whole and their ideals of succession. Still, some of the major Reach families which supported the Blackfires also supported the Greens, something to think about in your own gameplay. But that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was not only entertaining, but informative. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube junk, so that you let YouTube and myself know that you want to see more of these in the future. I actually just realized here at the end of the video that I never talked about what my favorite houses are in the region. Um, I figured you might want to know that really fast, so I'm just going to tack it on here at the end since it's not that important. And the people who want to know will probably still be here. So my favorite houses in the region are the Fossaways because I really like their lore. I love their inclusion in the Hedge Knight novellas. I do like the Peaks. I think they're really interesting. I don't necessarily like the people because they're awful, but I think that they have fascinating lore. They're really kind of got shafted by the Blackfire Rebellions. And then if I had to pick another one, yeah, probably the Oak Hearts, just because they're really good. They're just honorable. They're good lads. And I mean, it's just a good house. I mean, the Rowans are cool too. They have like this beautiful golden grove that they live in. That's kind of cool. Um, and the whole reach is great. I, it's hard to pick a favorite, but probably the Fossilways if I had to pick like an individual one house favorite. But that's going to be it for this one. I'm Sol. This has been another Agot Lore video, and I will happily see you in the next one.